Well, that was worth getting out in this weather for that alone. <laughs> Thank you, Molly. Well, good morning. I feel like I can talk to each of you personally. <laughs> I mean, you're just, you know, I can see your faces this way this morning. <laughs> so hi, Alice, how are you? Great. <laughs> I hope you've been enjoying our adventure through some popular Christmas stories this month. Yeah? Now I'm gonna frighten you. <laughs> Everybody's hiding. Well, we have been exploring some uh, popular Christmas stories this month. We have uh, looked at the Scrooge story. We've talked about Elf, uh, the miracle on 34th Street. And today we're going to explore a little bit of the Polar Express because I think it's um, a beautiful, beautiful movie with a really beautiful message. And this is the week of peace. This is our fourth week of Advent. And so we're looking at how to find that peace within. And so this movie begins with our hero, a little boy who's right on the cusp of leaving his childhood beliefs and questioning the existence of Santa. He's collected some articles that talk about um, different department store Santas being found out to be real people. And he's looked up some information on the North Pole and found out that it's a barren and deserted area. And he's even told his sister, Sarah, that Santa Claus may not exist. And so we find our hero at this pivotal point in his life. On Christmas Eve, many years ago, I laid quietly in my bed. I did not rustle the sheets. I breathed slowly and silently. I listened for the sound I was afraid I'd never hear, the sound of Santa's sleigh bells. Edge of the monastery woods, an old rabbi had built a little hut. He would come to the monastery from time to time to fast and to pray. No one ever spoke to him, but whenever he appeared, the word would pass from monk to monk. The rabbi walks in the woods, they would say. And for as long as he was there, the monks would feel sustained by his prayerful presence. Well, one day the abbot decided to visit the rabbi in the woods and open his heart to him. He was troubled at what was going on in the monastery and didn't know what to do. And as he approached the hut, the abbot saw that the old monk in the woods was waiting for him as if he expected him to come. The two embraced like long lost brothers. Then they stepped back and just stood there, smiling at one another, with smiles their face could hardly contain. After a while, the rabbi motioned for the abbot to enter, and as they sat together at the table, the abbot poured out his heart, his heart tears flowing from his eyes. He sobbed. The old man just sat and held him. After the tears had ceased to flow and all was quiet again, the rabbi lifted his head. You and your brothers are serving God with heavy hearts, he said. You have come to ask a teaching of me. I will give you a teaching, but you can only repeat it once. The abbot agreed. And so he heard the words that the old monk spoke to him. The Messiah is among you. Then he just went silent. The abbot left without a word and without ever looking back. Well, the next morning, the abbot called all his monks together in the chapter room. He told them he had received a teaching from the rabbi in the woods and that his teaching was never again to be spoken out loud. Then he looked at each of his brothers and said, the rabbi said that one of us is the Messiah. The monks were startled by his saying that. What could it mean, they asked themselves. Is Brother John the Messiah or Father Matthew or Brother Thomas? Am I the Messiah? What could this mean? They were all deeply puzzled by the rabbi's teaching, but no one ever mentioned it again. As time went by, the monks began to treat one another with a very special reverence. There was a gentle, wholehearted human quality about them, which was hard to describe but easy to notice. 
They lived with one another as men who had finally found something, but they prayed the scriptures together as men who were always looking for something. Occasional visitors found themselves deeply moved by the life of the monks, and before long, people were coming from far and wide to be nourished by the prayer life that they found there. Young men were coming, once again asking to be part of the community. In those days, the rabbi no longer walked in the woods. His hut had fallen into ruins. But somehow, the old monks who had taken his teaching to heart still felt sustained by his prayerful presence. Unto you is born this day in the city of Overland Park, Kansas a Messiah who is Christ the Lord. So coming back to the hero of our story, he's had an opportunity to move through a variety of experiences as he took the Polar Express to the North Pole and met some of the elves. And on this journey were a number of characters that he comes to know, characters that I think represent that polarity that those opposites that exist within us that are asking to come together in the fullness of experience. There's the lonely boy who lives on the other side of the tracks, and then the hero girl who's filled with hope and light and love. There's the know-it-all who is driven by his ego, who thinks he's got all the answers. And then there's the ghost who represents the unknown, who invites him into the mystery that is the Christmas spirit. And so we join our hero at the moment that he has been waiting for. At one time, most of my friends could hear the bell, but as years passed, it fell silent for all of them. Even Sarah found one Christmas that she could no longer hear its sweet sound. Though I've grown old, the bell still rings for me, as it does for all who truly believe. Unto you is born this day. Within your heart, you are the manger that holds the beloved Christ spirit. You are the spirit of Christmas. And this is your crucial year. So I suggest you get on board. 